Thanks, Danielle. So why we've heard Raf and, and Danielle talk a little bit about where, where's the future going, I want to go back and ground you a little bit in where, where is robotics today and, and where are we seeing some of the big uh, growth opportunities. So if we get the third slide deck, um, a little bit of luck. Uh, so, so I want to talk about where, you know, where, where do we see some of the big growth opportunities? What are some of the things that are driving this today? And also I want to talk about uh, where is this sort of going from? Uh, where, why is it that China right now is seeing this massive amount of growth that, that we're seeing elsewhere? So um, we're going through an economy where we're going from mass manufacturing to mass customization. So um, for Richard, I have to say this is a simple car from the UK. Uh, so it's only available in one million different configurations. Uh, the Audi A4 is available in 4 million different configurations. At the same time, the average storage time of material going into an automotive factory is 12 minutes. We've orchestrated through lean manufacturing to a level where material arrives 12 minutes later, it's mounted in a car, and it's on its way out. And the fact that we make 4 million different configurations implies that we have to do automation, otherwise we just can't do it well enough and we can't do it precise enough that we can do this. The other, of course, we're seeing is that we're doing electronics manufacturing. So most of you have a cell phone. The average lifetime for a cell phone is 11 months. So, you know, for this, we actually cannot build manufacturing factories that only make one cell phone. So if we're looking at it for somebody like Apple, I'm not thinking about, you know, an XS. I'm thinking about how am I going to make the 11 and the 12? because otherwise we're not gonna, gonna get an economy into this. So we need to have sort of repurposable manufacturing that allows us to do this with a very high degree uh, of automation. Uh, if we go in and look at the robotic statistics, they're actually being announced tomorrow, so you're sort of getting a preview. Uh, the last year, we, you know, we, we hit a record in terms of the number of robots coming out. We continue to see 2009 was not a pretty year. That's true for most sectors of the economy. But here you can see we're seeing sort of an, an immense acceleration of the pickup of industrial robotics. Um, so best year so far, we've seen in the 19, sort of from, from 2010 to 2017, 19% consolidated average growth rates, uh, which is very nice. We're seeing half of the robots being sold in Asia. We're seeing a 37% overall growth uh, 16 to, to 17. In, in Asia, if you look at where we're we selling robots, you can basically China, Japan, US, South Korea, and Germany, you have 70% of the market. Um, and at the same time, 36% or more than one third of all robots being sold are being sold in China today. It's a huge growth sector. Um, if we go in, so the green is, the, is Asia, uh, yellow is, is Europe and America is, is blue. So we are one of, we are becoming one of the smaller markets in terms of where this is getting, getting picked up. Uh, Asia is just out there a big time. Um, if we look at where the application areas are of, of uh, robots today, of industrial robots, it's 42% automotive, it's 21% electronics, it's 10% metal. So that's basically 75% of all of the application domains. And then we get into some of the emerging markets that, that we're seeing, like healthcare, like pharma, like, uh, a number, uh, like food, uh, that are some of the rapidly growing. But still, 42% of this goes into automotive manufacturing. Interesting tidbit, 30% of all automotive manufacturing in the world today is done in China. That's why we're seeing this massive amount of growth. Almost no of the, none of these cars are being exported. They're actually being sold in China. Uh, so there is a huge opportunity to continue to, to see growth in this sector. Um, a new area that we're getting into, and Daniela briefly touched on it, and Raf also touched on it, is robots that are safe to use in the vicinity of people. How can we build collaborative robots that can be used next to people? This is very important because 90% of our manufacturing companies are small and medium-sized enterprises. And they represent 60% of our export, so it's a significant amount of our economy. They need to have robots that are small enough that you can basically do one-off manufacturing. They're easy to program. They're, they're very flexible. You can do this. Uh, and a few years ago, we had a new standard uh, 
that basically allowed us to use these next to humans. So we now have methods in place that dictate how, you know, how close can you get to human? What if there is a potential for a collision? So the robot you might see this afternoon that actually closing the bell is one of these safe robots that are guaranteed to be human safe. So even though there's a bunch of people up there standing next to the robot, they're perfectly safe because we have the right safety standards. This has led to a growth where we're talking about 40% year over year growth in collaborative robots. You can see this explode over the next few years. Simple enough to use that somebody that has not really used robots before within half an hour can get introduction to how to actually use these and then go and start producing. So that's gonna be a really big deal going forward. Coming back to China, why are we seeing this? On so China, we're seeing this roadmap called Manufacturing 2025. How does China ensure that manufacturing stays in China and doesn't go somewhere else? We're starting to see a creep into Malaysia and, and, and other countries. There, there's an interest in how, how do we do this? How do we make sure we can do this the right way? So um, in China, you can see the robotic sales are going up. It's 138,000 uh, robots sold last year. Uh, pretty big deal, 60% um, growth uh, overall, 75% uh, of them are made by foreign companies still. So KUKA, ABB, Fanuc, Yaskawa, um, they are seeing sort of 49% growth and then you're seeing 25% uh, uh, of, uh, of the Chinese companies and they are seeing much more significant growth. Of course, now we have to look at KUKA was recently bought by Medea, so is that a foreign company or a Chinese company? It doesn't matter, they're still seeing sort of very good numbers coming out of this. So, so here is sort of the overall distribution where you see of, of the different companies that, that, are, that are in China right now, but it's the area sort of at the top here where we're seeing the massive amount of growth. It's the automotive, it's the electronics, but it's also new application areas that's coming in that's very much driving this forward. Um, so one of the things is, of course, is this gonna be sustainable? Are we gonna continue to see this level of growth? The way we would typically measure this is that we would look at what are the number of robots deployed per 10,000 workers. And some would say, oh, we already have lights out factories. Yeah, that's a beautiful dream. I also want to get there. A highly automated automotive factory has one robot for every 10 workers. Just to give you a sense for where we are, so if there are 1,000 workers, there are 100 or less robots in those. So we, we will continue to see significant growth. Uh, and here is sort of the world average. If you look at it, you know, South Korea, Singapore, Germany are some of the areas where, where we have a tremendous penetration of robotics into the manufacturing industry. You have to sort of go very far down that line to sort of see China is at 87 robots per 10,000 workers, and the world average is 110. So for China, even to get to average utilization of robotics, they have to buy at least 25% more robots than they do, than they have installed today. So we're not gonna see this stop anytime soon. We're gonna continue to see this grow over and over for an extended period of time, and that's why we're seeing massive investments in Chinese companies or in China, so when you do joint ventures from FANA, KUKA, ABB, all of them to make sure that you're present in that market. Um, so in summary, we're seeing manufacturing robotics seeing very strong growth, primarily because we as customers want these fully customized products, and of course I want them today, so I would like to combine RAF's idea of, and, and Danielle's idea of doing 3D printing, my long-term vision is that in the back of a UPS truck, I can basically have a 3D printer, so by the day, by the time, you know, you press the purchase button, we 3D print it in the back of the truck, and they show up at your front door and they do this. You might say, oh, that's a wild dream. 45% of all books that you buy at Amazon today are printed in a local warehouse they slap a cover on it and they give it to you. They are never on a truck anymore. So we're already seeing this moving manufacturing out to be at the edge. It's very close to the customer. It's not like the old economy where we had manufacturing in centralized places. We had a big logistics chain that would actually distribute it out. We now do manufacturing as close as possible to the customer. We do it with books. We do it with certain products. 
through the adventure of 3D printing and other things, we are gonna continue to see this get out. We're seeing this for customized uh, materials. So Daniela talked about uh, medical applications. We are now at a place where we can 3D print a hip that fits you rather than you're no longer a number 10 or a number eight. Fully customized products. So we see this in healthcare, we see this in manufacturing, we see this in all sorts of applications. And that's why you're gonna continue to see this massive amount of growth the co-robots, of course, will enable us to empower the small and medium-sized enterprises to continue to be competitive in a continuing sort of global enterprise. Uh, so we see industrial robots overall, we see the co-robot even faster, um, and we have sort of a preview of the 2018 numbers. They're even better than the 2017 numbers. So we continue to see very strong growth. And with that, I'll say thank you and hand it over to Jeremy. <laughs>